You are gonna love these recipes. It's finally getting a little colder here and I'm craving some cozy comfort food. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing two delicious crock pot recipes that you and your family are gonna love. This video is extra special because it's a collab hosted by myself and my very sweet friend Tiffany over at Small Town Six. We've gotten together a great group of ladies to share their favorite fall foods. I'll have Tiffany's channel linked below along with a playlist full of delicious recipes. So be sure to check that out. Okay, y'all, let's go ahead and get started. You'll wanna make this slow cooker chili again and again. In a large skillet, I have two pounds of ground beef here. I'm just browning that up along with one diced green bell pepper and one small diced onion. And you're just gonna let that cook until that ground beef is cooked through. And y'all, Sammy over at Managing the Maze has me hooked on this Badia Complete. So I had to add a little of that in. I'll link her channel below. If you don't already know who she is, you have got to check her out. When your ground beef is cooked through, go ahead and remove it from the heat, drain it, and then we're gonna head over to the counter. Usually I get rid of that grease with a paper towel, but this was way too much for that. I just got a new crock pot and I couldn't think of a better way to use it than making some good old chili. I added in that ground beef and peppers along with one packet of chili seasoning mix and one packet of the Chilio seasoning mix. I'm just using what I had on hand, but you can use both of either or as long as it's chili seasoning mix. I'm also adding a couple teaspoons of the Worcestershire sauce one tablespoon of brown sugar, a 15 ounce can of chili beans, and I did not drain those. In fact, I don't drain anything in this recipe. You're also gonna need one can of Great Northern Beans. That was undrained. Two cans of pinto beans, undrained. And you can feel free to change out the beans in this recipe, just use what you like. Now I'm adding one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, along with one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce and one 10 ounce can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. And that's the same thing as Rotel. I always get the mild and that does not make this spicy. And that is all there is to it. We're gonna give all this a really good stir and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's mixed together a little bit. Now you're gonna cover it and we're gonna set it to cook on low for eight hours. Or if you're in a hurry, you could do high for four hours. This is really good to cook on days you have to work and you just start it before you go and it's ready when you get home. Except for the cornbread. We love to have cornbread with our chili. You'll have to let me know below what you like to serve yours with. And here it is, it's been cooking for almost eight hours and it looks delicious. If this ain't some good old cozy comfort food, I don't know what is. I've heard of people serving this over spaghetti noodles, so you'll have to let me know if you've tried that. I haven't tried it yet, but I do want to. We like to top ours with a little sour cream and shredded cheese. And there's my cornbread I made to go along with it. Now my husband prefers the Jiffy Mix, but I prefer this Southern cornbread right here. This chili is amazing. You just gotta try it. And I can pretty much guarantee that your family will love it. And since I made cornbread, I had to show you how I grew up eating it. I don't put butter on it. I put Duke's mayonnaise on it. I put it on my black eyed peas too. Oh, it is so good in those black eyed peas. I just wanted to jump in right quick and say, if you're coming over from the playlist, welcome. My name is Valerie and I'm so glad you're here. I post lots of easy recipes. So if that's something you're interested in, 
I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and become part of my YouTube family. Okay, let's get back to these recipes. This is a new recipe I tried for slow cooker chicken and dressing. The recipe says to add a diced onion and one cup of chopped celery straight into your slow cooker, but I always saute my veggies for my dressing, so I figured I'd do the same for these. So that's one diced onion, and I only chopped up one stalk of celery. I also have a couple tablespoons of butter in there, and I'm just sauteing those until they're tender. And I know, I probably let them go a little too long, but they were still good. And now we can take these on over to the counter. I've got a large bowl here. You'll need a very large bowl here. Now I'm adding in the onions and celery. And feel free to add in more of those if you like. And if you don't like the texture of veggies in your dressing, you can always do onion powder and ground celery seed. And now I'm adding in two cans of cream of chicken soup. The recipe also called for one can of cream of mushroom soup, but I decided to go with celery instead. And look y'all, my luck. Those pop tops are convenient, but they don't always work like they should. And of course that was my only can of cream of celery, but I managed to get it open. I'm also adding in four eggs. And look mama, I know you're watching, I'm adding your favorite ingredient. That's four teaspoons of sage. Now I'm adding two teaspoons of thyme. I really need to use this more often. And then that's one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. And these are just little extras that I added in. I did a little garlic powder and poultry seasoning. Now you're just gonna give this a really good whisk before we add in the rest. Just make sure you get those eggs mixed up really good. And this is what I meant by you need a very large bowl. I'm adding 10 cups of cornbread crumbs. I just made a few batches of cornbread when I made that chili. That way I would already have it for this recipe. It also called for eight slices of day old bread. I just had the thick cut kind, so I just used four slices of that. I didn't want to go overboard. I was already feeling like I was walking on the wild side, thinking about trying to stir all this. The recipe called for two of the 14.5 ounce cans of chicken broth. I googled it and it said there was 1.80 cups in each can. So I ended up adding three and two thirds cup of chicken broth here. And lastly, you're gonna add in a whole shredded rotisserie chicken. I just had chicken that I cooked up in the crock pot. So I added four cups of that. That's typically what's on a rotisserie chicken. Well, they do seem to be getting a lot smaller if you ask me. And just do your best to stir that until it's well combined. Now I'm taking that mixture and adding it into my crock pot. I should have weighed this bowl. It's a glass bowl and it's already really heavy. So with all that stuff in there, it was a chunk of lead. I just kind of pushed it around in there, kind of spread it out into an even layer. Now you're gonna cover it, and you can cook this on low for four to five hours, but of course I was in a hurry this night, so I did it for three hours on high. And let me tell you, it smelled like Thanksgiving in my house. If you have a smaller family and you don't want to fool with cooking a big turkey, you could definitely try this. And look at me, I was going to try to get this out with a spatula and that didn't last very long. I just knew I was going to make a mess of everything. I have a ton of metal spoons, metal serving spoons, but this is a brand new crock pot and I didn't want to even think about maybe messing it up. But this one right here did the trick. Oh, and I forgot to mention, right before this was done, I made up some gravy to pour on top of it. And use any gravy you like. You can buy the pre-made gravy or you can make it homemade. You can do the little turkey gravy packs or even the chicken gravy packs. 
But y'all, this was absolutely delicious. I will definitely be making it again. There's so much you can do with this recipe to change it up and kind of make it your own. And in my regular dressing, I like to add in chopped boiled eggs. I know that sounds funny, but that's how I grew up eating dressing. So next time, I'll have to try that in this. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes, and I will see you in the next one.